Hello, my name is Will Cherney, and I'm doing my presentation over Rudolf Dreicher's social discipline theory. So, uh, Rudolf Dreicher's was heavily influenced by Alfred Adler. Uh, he was a child psychiatrist and uh, someone, someone who uh, Dreicher's would eventually form his own theory around. Uh, Dreicher's theory was uh, the belief that the central motivation of all humans is to belong. Uh, Dreicher's belief is associated with a person's own interpretations of the world. Uh, so Dreicher's main theory was the fact that he thought or he believed in that everyone wants uh, to belong and feel accepted, whether that be uh, socially, academically, uh, and many other ways. And he felt that uh, misbehavior, um, therefore, would be a way for a child to gain a status, um, you know, in the school system or uh, in a social uh, environments. So some of Dreiker's key ideas uh, were students are social beings. Their actions solely reflect their attempts to gain acceptance and become someone of importance. Uh, students can, can control their behavior by either behaving or misbehaving. And students misbehave in order to get recognition mistaken goals. Uh, so the mistaken goals is what Dreiker's um, valued his research around. And uh, these are some of the ideas I pulled from the textbook. So four goals of misbehavior, um, according to Dreikers. Um, number one was attention getting. Uh, this is basically uh, getting the teacher, um, you know, out of uh, out of sync. Um, many other ways like that. Uh, number two, power and control. Um, this was a big one. Uh, you can't, you got to have a teacher. You, as a teacher, you have to stay focused and stay uh, on task, and you can't let uh, a student's misbehavior um, pull you off track. Number three was revenge. Uh, and then number four was helplessness and uh, inadequacy. So this one, number four, is primarily when you have a student who, um, they're uh, struggling with, you know, uh, the material. They're struggling with having uh, the confidence to learn the material. And uh, therefore, they react with misbehavior towards the material you're teaching. Uh, another major strategy that he implemented was praise versus encouragement. Uh, he said encouragement is the most important aspect for misbehavior. Uh, praise involves focusing on the achievements of the student. Whereas encouragement focuses uh, the effort uh, the student is putting in. Um, it involves building up the student in order to get them on the right path. And uh, he also preached positivity over negativity. So pretty much uh, as a teacher, you want to have the most encouragement uh, as possible whenever you experience misbehaviors within your classroom. So some ways that he provided with addressing misbehavior, minimize the attention, uh, move the student, do the unexpected, um, don't allow the student to win the contest for power, uh, modify instructional methods, teach positive speech uh, and self-talk, and then lastly, teach that mistakes happen. Um, a lot of times, you know, kids don't, uh, students, uh, they're going to come across a lot of failure. Uh, so as a teacher, you just want to keep them on track and keep them encouraged with the material and, uh, you know, to help them with, uh, you know, all the things, including like the misbehavior, uh, that I've talked about. So the first example I came up with was where the student is misbehaving and will not do the assigned work. Uh, the student, when confronted by myself, does not comply. So what Dreikers would suggest was, in order to defuse the situation, I would make sure to speak softly and give sincere encouragement. Make an agreement with the student uh, can help them to help them also uh, to help yourself with winning the situation. Uh, an agreement is something that you know you come up with between yourself and the student. Um, there are many things you could do in, in this case. Um, 
just to help the student uh, to keep them from misbehaving in your class. Number two, uh, I actually had, I came up with this example because this actually happened to me. And this is what my, our teacher did uh, in high school to a student that we had in our class. We had a we had an athlete acting up in class, um, you know, really popular kid, but re would always refuse to do the work. So uh, what I would do, this is also what my teacher did, allow the student to present a PowerPoint to the class on their particular sport. Uh, you know, the, it'll help you to gain trust. In the individual, it allows them to exhibit their strength uh, on their sport, show the class something uh, just in their life that they can translate with, and this could lead to the student becoming more interested in the classroom, and in my case, with social studies content. And lastly, I had a my third example was a student comes to class every day without materials and without the drive uh, to want to learn social studies continuously doesn't believe that they can do the work refuses to try day in and day out so what I suggest is I must assign students around them to help and work with them during a class I must help the students be encouraging to them and uh, to help them with the material and I must myself must always stay involved and help the student to the best of their ability and that's it thank you